help yourself to sugar and milk. Uh, Hello. Oh, thank have you signed in? Yes. And we will continue to do. Yes, yes. 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 We as Marketing West, uh, obviously a marketing company, uh, what we do is try and educate clients and businesses as to how to market their businesses properly. We get lots of calls, lots of emails from different businesses saying, now, what's this social media stuff all about? I know I should use it, but I don't know how to use it. So we decided to put on a series of um, half day or one day seminars teaching people about social media, whether it's Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, it doesn't matter, how to use it and how to use it to help their business. There's no point in, in being on Facebook or on Twitter if it's not helping your business. What we also try and do is teach them how to link it in to their websites and again to grow business. Um, what we're planning, this is only the beginning, we've so far had around 110, 120 businesses come along. What we're planning now is a series of much more hands-on sessions where people actually have a computer in front of them and we teach them how to really get the best out of their Twitter uh, feeds, out of their Facebook page, whatever. So that, that's what it's all about. We're trying to help people grow their businesses. Thank you, John. Right, I'm only talking for two minutes. There are two speakers, um, uh, Mike Hensman, the, uh, the gentleman standing there now. Uh, Mike is going to talk you through social media. And then Martin Hope, who's, who's, who's at the back by the food, is, um, is then going to tell you how to link the social media into your website. If you've got any questions, ask straight away. Just put your hand up. If it overruns and you have to go, go. Don't feel guilty about anything. Very relaxed today. Uh, let's all enjoy it and let's all learn something. So uh, I think having said that, over to Mike. Thank you. Um, I'm Mike Hensman. Um, I'm not a technical person. I'm a salesperson. Um, so you're not going to get lots of bits and bytes and technical things about um, social media. Social media to me is just a tool. And uh, what I want to try and explain in the first bit of the presentation is how it really interfaces with, with business today. So, um, you know, lots of people, you hear about Stephen Fry tweeting that he's stuck in a lift or he's in a bar of chocolate and stuff like that. You've got to get rid of all this stuff. This is a tool on how you improve your business. And if that's not what you're trying to do today, you're in the wrong presentation. Okay, cool. Okay, so first of all, let's, I want to look back a bit. I, I've been around a long time, grey hair, I was talking to someone else who's, oh, grey hair today. And um, so, but my background is, has been, I've worked for software and hardware companies for a long time. So when I first heard about um, the technology of social media, the tools of social media, I wanted to try and understand how that fitted into my experience in, in sales. Okay? So what I first of all did was um, look back into old style selling, if you will, what I would term as a sales cycle. You can call the steps what you like, but in essence, if you've been in a, a selling environment, you've got to do these. You've got to research and identify who your customers are, you've got to educate them, qualify, or prove you can do what you say you can do, and you negotiate and close. So that's a sales cycle. I mean, any, in any contention with that as a, as a process, yeah? You'll be happy with that. Um, it will become clear while I'm going through this. Now, identity research is, is I'm not going to read that, but it's all about who your potential clients are, why they buy, where they buy, how they buy. And that, that's all old style selling, which um, I used to do a long time ago. And then you go in and educate them. You do face to face visits, you have press relations, you have your website. You'd send out brochures, mailers, you get uh, educated from our clients, it's seminars, advertising. Again, all old style form of selling. This is all going, why is he doing this? It'll become clear in a minute. Then you'd educate yourself about your prospects' business, their industry, who they are, what, what they do. And then you'd want to qualify them. Have they got the money? Have they got the authority to sign for your business to pay you the money? Um, do they need what you're trying to sell in the product or services and are they going to buy it in an acceptable time frame? Then you'd have to prove, you know, where you show them money, you demonstrate whether you might sell it hardware or software. 
you provide a reference client, and basically you <coughs> prove to them what your product and service is, what, what it does what it says on the tin. Okay? This has all changed, and the internet, in effect, changed everything. From now, people do their own research on you. So you don't research and identify. They research and identify you. They identify the possible suppliers and solutions to their business issue or, their, or the product service they want to buy. They find their own proof. They go online. You know, there's lots of sites where they talk about products and services online. Um, there's the, the hotel sites where you, you put up your trip advisor or that sort of stuff. So you can go and research anything you want from anywhere on the internet. And in short, they qualify you. So they qualify you in or out. And the thing is, if they qualify you out, you don't even know they've gone through these other steps. These steps that we always used to do in, the, in old style selling is all now done by the customer. Right? So I believe that social media helps you fill those gaps. So it addresses the changes that the internet has given to us. So I'm going to talk about three things. Facebook? Who here has got a Facebook account? Like a personal account? And who's got a company account? Great, okay, good. Super. And who tweets? Okay, good, excellent. And who's got a LinkedIn account? All right, okay, so a few. All right, so, all right good. So what is social media? Um, in essence, it's a set of tools. I, I, I try to avoid words on a slide, but these are fairly important. I believe now in business it's mandatory. For the reasons we talked about the sales cycle changes, it's now mandatory you have to address these to be able to address the changes in business and the sales cycle. This is important. You know, it's been puffed up, promoted, misunderstood, and rubbish because of the concepts of, you know, I've just gone in the lift or I've just had egg on toast for breakfast. That sort of thing makes me think I'm wasting my time. If you try and see through all that, then you will see the value. It's got a major impact on organisations, their image, the communities and the consumer. I'm going to come back to the com community word in a minute because it's an important word. So therefore you ignore it in your peril. You should be part of the discussion rather than subject to it. Um, I'm, I'm a bit of a, of, a, of, a, of a man for statistics. And old style selling, if you had a problem with a customer, that customer would tell on average seven people. And those seven people would tell seven people. So if you had a problem with a customer, you would have got about 50 people know about it. In the internet, because of the way people can publish good news and bad news, you just put a couple of zeros on the end. So if there's bad news out there, you need to be aware of it. So you could ignore social media and just say, I don't really care. But then you can't address these issues that are out there. So it's important. And equally, you can deal with the issues and you can promote good news. So, be part of the discussion rather than the subject of it. All right. Who, who here has heard of Google Alerts? A few people. Okay. So what Google Alerts does, um, you know how Google works. It's got things called spiders that it searches around the internet for keywords that you key in. Yeah. What Google Alerts does enables you to set up an alert on a word or a phrase or a series of words and phrases. And what it does is it regularly goes and looks for those word and phrases everywhere on the internet and sends you a note back by email saying, here is the link to that, so you can click on the link and go and look at it. And if there's an issue, deal with it. If it's, if it's a, a, a positive thing, you can promote it, okay? So, first thing, first bit of good news, if you don't have a Google Alert, write it down, go back, and set up a Google Alert. On a Google, you have to have a Google account, which is free. Set up a Google Alert for your company name or your product name, and quite cleverly, some people set it up for their competitors' names as well, okay? Now, story on this, I'm one for stories, and one of our customers um, works for an insurance company. It's a travel insurance company, a very large one. And um, we told him about this, and he set it up, and a few weeks later he had a Google Alert come through, and it sent him to a very obtuse forum, never seen, obscure forum, never seen it before. He went to this forum, and there was this guy ranting about this company. It's Mondiel, who you might not have heard of, but if you've ever travelled by people like EasyJet, all their travel insurance is just... Mondial's white labelled. Okay, this guy had been rubbishing uh, Mondial because they hadn't paid out on a on a claim. So he then went to the forum. He signed up for the forum. He then private messaged the guy on the forum and said, "Give me more details." He investigated, and the guy was right. 
he should have been paid out. So he had him paid out, told the guy, the guy then started saying how wonderful Mondi are. So he turned it round. But had he not been aware of the data by using social media, such as forums and Google Alerts, then he wouldn't have had to deal with it. And it could have affected you know, thousands of opportunities rather than a handful. So very valuable tool. If you do nothing else, do that today. Um, so everyone now is in the media business. I've got, you know, I'm, I'm pretty um, stone age in technology, but our phone apparently this not only takes pictures, it takes short videos. And my daughters tell me I can actually load that onto a website or onto Facebook or something like that. That's really powerful. So, you know, you've got those Kodak moments that you can basically upload something positive, get it onto your website, get it onto your Facebook, put it onto YouTube, wherever you want, and then basically you're updating it and you're giving people the positive stuff coming out. Yeah? So, um, choice. This is the big issue, or one of the big issues. I've just got a handful there. I've got slides with hundreds of them. A bit over on. There are literally 30 or 40,000 different social media sites. Now, they're not all as popular as these. Some are just little forums. But anything that enables people to interact with other people in an open way is to be considered a social media site. So even if you've got a blog on your website and people can interact with your blog, then that is, in effect, a social media site. So there are thousands of them. I'm going to go through every single one today. <laughs> Key thing is, is pick the ones that are best for you. <coughs> All right? We're going to go through three. I think those three are pretty good for everybody. Um, you might want to add on things like YouTube. <coughs> you might want to add on things like Blogger, which is another Google-based product. Okay? But you don't want it any more than that. You have a, your own blog on your website. You want six, seven, eight to manage, maximum. All right? And otherwise, you just get blown away with it. It shouldn't be a problem. It should be a, 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 something positive you want to do because you're sharing. Think of it as another form of advertising. Think of it as marketing rather than just a pain you have to do. Okay? So I'm going to go through a few C's. This is the community. So what do I mean by community? Um, in old style selling, your community was in essence your customers or your prospects, or friends of customers, or anybody that might be interested in your product or service. That would term in, in the social media day, day terms as your community. And your job really is to make sure your community are fully aware of what you do, and who you are, how you do it, why you do it, where you do it. Because that's your prospect. So when it comes to them researching for a solution, they don't not know about you, they know about you and they've been educated about you. So community is really important. Any questions on that so far? Any? No? Everybody's happy, just shout if you're not. So my next C is content. Um, what this means is there's no point putting, doing the social media and then putting rubbish on like, you know, I'm in the lift and I'm having a um, bird or something just got up late, I'm lying in today. No one's interested. What they're interested in is content that interests them. So, um, for instance, um, one of our friends in the, I live in the, um, in the Otter Valley, and across the other side of the valley there's a guy with um, a bed and breakfast and holiday cottages, okay? And you'd think, you know, using social media, well they'd be saying, oh, you know, come and stay here, it's a wonderful place. Come and stay at our hotel. Sorry, our, our, um, our bed and breakfast. You know, and pushing rates, pushing occupancy. They don't do that at all. 80 to 90 percent of their, their 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 messages on Facebook and Twitter are all about what's going on in Honiton, what's going on in the, in the valley, um, what events are coming up, um, great pictures of scenery they've taken. It's all about creating a community by giving them the right content. And they basically have got all their people that have ever stayed there, follow them on Twitter or Facebook, and they just educate them all the time. Now, when someone's doing that content, someone wants a weekend away in Devon, who are they gonna think about? They're gonna think about this place they've stayed before, that's it's not bombarding with emails saying we've got vacancies, we've got vacancies, but is actually educating them what's going on. Okay, very important. So, um, and what happens every now and again, of course, 
they say, oh, and there's a vacancy in the Jasmine Cottage at that weekend. But it's subtle. It isn't in your face all the time. And they've got business on the back of this. Okay. But it's, if you think about it, when you're trying to sell, someone comes into your shop or comes in or you phone them, you don't immediately say, what do you want to buy? You, you, well, you laugh. But that's what, if you do that on social media, that's what in effect you're doing. If you just bombard them with offers and this and this and this, all they're basically saying is, he's just trying to sell to me. And what they'll do is just switch you off. And when you've got no way of getting them to switch you back on again. Someone switches you off on social media, you're dead. Okay? Everybody happy with that? Mm -hmm. Pardon? They can switch you I'd off. switch you off, yeah. Not you, oh, right. not the whole yeah, thing. Right. If they're following you on, <coughs> if they're yeah, following you, yeah. I'll give you an example. <coughs> um, I, I shoot clay pigeons. <coughs> they're not very really tasty, but they're quite good fun. And, um, sorry? That's where I've seen <laughs> oh, okay. oh, there you go. So I shoot clay pigeons, and um, I um, when I when I, a while back <coughs> first got into Twitter, I I um, tweeted that I'd taken my um, nephew clay pigeon shooting. Now, for a lot of people that might not be interesting, but the people I know they find that quite interesting. So oh, you took Ryan clay pigeon shooting, he got on really well, and if you go here, here's the pictures. Right, so that's fantastic, you know. So um, there's a thing. Um, capability in Google to, sorry, to fade into Twitter to search for things. So there's a guy in Boston in America who's got a permanent search on clay pigeon shoots. So anybody ever posts anything that contains clay pigeon shoot, he finds it. So immediately this guy started following me on Twitter because he was interested in what I was saying. Now, there's a logic in, in <coughs> Twitter that if you follow someone, they follow you back. It's like a etiquette, good, good word. Um, and it's about 80-90%. But they'll only follow you for as long as it's an interesting post and it's a relevant post and you don't bombard them. So I started following this guy, a week later I switched him off. I was getting 15 to 16 tweets a day. I was this going on, this, and they were quite good, but there was just too many. And I, I follow quite a lot of people on Twitter, so I don't want it inundated with one guy all the time. I want to see other stuff, yeah? So basically, I turned him off, and I will never bother turning him back on again. I can't even remember who he is now. However, if he did speak to me now and again, and I go to the States now and again, I'd have been in Boston, I might have gone and do a bit of clay pigeon shooting. So it might have worked, because I don't know anywhere else in Boston to go clay pigeon shooting, but this place, which I've now forgotten about. Okay? So you get the idea. So content is really important. <coughs> Oh, sorry. Hands up. Right. Yep. What, what, what is the balance then with time and content? And you know, is there a magic formula for that? Because you can <coughs> spend an awful lot of time. You or, can spend an enormous know. amount of time on it. I would say, start small, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes a day. And as you build up, as you find you're getting <coughs> stuff from it, like introductions, phone calls, or, or business. I mean, this Oodle Oodle Farm one. They. Um, uh, I know the guy every, I don't go reg, um, well because every week I have to go to the pub on a Friday with him, you know, it's, it's, it's the law. And um, we, uh, we went down there and he was saying, you know, his wife was spending too much time, she's spending half an hour a day on Twitter and Facebook, and I said, well, you know, just tell her to cut back. You know, it's not a drug, you know, just tell her to cut back, slow down, and three weeks later you come back, we've got two bookings on the back of it. You know, so as you see stuff coming, you can then turn the tap back on. You only do as much as you need to do. If you're posting you know, more than um, one or two tweets a day, you're doing a lot. You know, three or four a week's fine. Facebook, similar sort of thing. You just, you want to be there regularly. So people don't necessarily, I mean, who, who's got email here? Yeah. <laughs> Whose email box is always full? Right. So problem is, because the email's full, it's really hard to filter out what you want to read on email. But if they're on Facebook, they're not reading the email, they're just seeing what's on Facebook or Twitter. So it's just, think of it as another channel. So just make sure you've got that channel moving. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Another yeah. hand. Yeah, um, maybe you're going to come to this anyway. How do you build up your community? Because just like your friend on the other side of the valley or whatever, I have a B&B and I do exactly what he does. But how do I get people to actually go on Facebook? Because I'm sure his clientele, like mine, is, oh, we don't do Facebook. Make, make it worth their while. Make it worth their while. Is it poor etiquette to shove the laptop in front of them as they're leaving the guest house? And say, Would you like to someone like me, please? If you can. Oh, that's that's terrible etiquette. No, you wouldn't do because that. Because I'm sure a lot of people on TripAdvisor do that. 
Um, um, yeah. We all know that a lot of the trip, home, trip advisor is, is a lot of it is just fiction anyway. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. But once you've gone home, it's very you know it's very hard to stay in their mind. Yeah, it's really home. hard. So yeah. you, what you say to them is, look, we've got we've got if they've got a Facebook, fifty percent of the UK population have Facebook accounts. So oh. you know they're, they're, it's not an insignificant number. Oh. You just say, look, we, we don't want to bombard you with emails. We want to keep you up to date with what's going on. If you like us on Facebook, you'll just see the news. Mm -hmm. And we regularly have offers on Facebook, oh, right? right? Yeah. Oh, that's right. that's the, the buyback. The we have offers thing. on Facebook, yeah. which aren't always, because I can't get them all into emails, so I put the offer yeah. on Facebook. So people like us get an offer, so then you yeah. could use that, okay? okay? Yeah. You can run competitions, yeah. you know, pictures, or and you can run polls on Facebook. You know, I'm thinking about painting so-and-so cottage or room. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you think? What colour do you think I should put it in? That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Make them part of the community, yeah? Okay, sorry, there was a, oh, so a lot of hotels have these business card drawers, don't they? You just yep. Great idea. Oh, business yeah. card drawer. Yeah. yeah. See, community can solves the problem. Can I just ask, you talk about Twitter and the guy in Canada. How did you know he was following you? I, I forget. Because it, it tells you. It so and so is following yeah, you. It yeah. sends you an email saying so and so is oh, following right, yeah. you. Yeah. Is this sort of thing, Facebook, Twitter, is it a, subs a substitute for perhaps using email? Um, Mail shots. It's another another channel. I'd never tell oh. it's a replacement. It's it's just different. Okay. You've got to look at all your different channels to market. And that's why I'm saying, you know, when we talked about the earlier, the different ports of the sales cycle. This is this is just new. You've got to work out how to harness it. I'll give you an example. Um, another stat. I'll tell you about maybe that stats, but something in the order of 50% of all Google searches originate with someone sitting in in, in YouTube. They were actually in YouTube when they initiated a Google search for something. Now, it might be because they saw a picture they like, a video they like, or it reminded them of something, and they wanted to search. So, so basically, you know, there's another point of the channel. So if you've got stuff you can put up in, in YouTube, get it up there, because people find it. And from there, they say, oh, that's really interesting. Let me go and search their site. And the, the reason YouTube, uh, Google know that is because, of course, they own YouTube. With, with YouTube and, and Facebook and things, you said it, it's it's the standard thing. If somebody's following you, you follow them. But say with YouTube, have got people that are subscribed? No, no. What I said is on Twitter. On Twitter. Okay. Yeah. What about say on YouTube? I've got people subscri subscribing to my account. Yes. And I'm being asked if I want to subscribe to them, but I don't. Well, is don't. It, is it rude not doing so? No. Yeah. No. Some people might consider it, but I mean the point is. I would say to you is, is look at their profile. Yeah. Do they do they provide any value to you? No, not so. Well, don't follow them. No. It's the same as LinkedIn. You know, don't don't worry about upsetting people because if they don't give you any value, it doesn't hurt them. Except I want them to buy my product, so I want them to buy me. So so there is a reason for them for you <laughs> okay, to follow because yes, yes. you want your product. Yeah. So I refrain and change my mind and I to say, look, I'd be really interested in following you. Do you have a Twitter account? Because then, yeah, yeah. yeah you you've got more control on the interaction rather than YouTube. Yeah. So I'd love to follow you on YouTube, but I actually manage all those contacts through Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever it is. Can we do that on there? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Someone else had a hand up earlier, no? No? Okay. Move along, sorry. Yeah. So conversations. <clears throat> what are you trying to do? You're trying to be open in your communication with your community. So conversations are all about using other people's input. We just had a solution to a problem there. Someone actually came up with another solution. We've got a community here, and a lot of things we know can help each other. So create these conversations between people. So when you have a Facebook company page, do not close it off from input. Have it open so other people can post it. If they post bad things, you've got a problem. Fix the problem. Don't say, I don't want bad things put on Facebook. Yeah, Live with it and fix it. Because if you don't, it's going to be somewhere else. They're going to rant and rave about your product or service somewhere else, so fix it. The nice thing about conversations is it starts to solve issues anyway. So I think I spoke to someone who was someone was talking about um, the forum earlier on, and they just said, well, look, you know, why don't you get everybody else to talk to each other about it? And they'll help solve their own problems by doing it. Um, so conversations. Um, the other thing about conversations is um, you can have a group. A, a sort of like a special interest group. So if you have uh, clients that you want to keep uh, in a group and and um, 
and communicate with them separately on their own. Then you, in something like Facebook, you can set up a group. In something like uh, in LinkedIn, you can set up groups. I use um, a group in Facebook. I, I, it's, a, it's a closed user group, so you can only join by invitation, and it's called Social Media Evangelists. So if anybody wants to join it, just find it on Facebook, request to join. I'll let you, I'll let you in. And what I use Social Media Evangelists is to manage my community and develop my community. If I find any of my fantastic statistics, I stick them there. If I find any neat little bits of software, I stick it there. And then people say, oh yeah, I've tried that, it's really good. Someone else says, well, I've got this issue. And they actually start to solve their own issues because I've got them <coughs> working together, conversations in a community. So if you've got a situation where you've got a product where you might have a customer forum, you can use that in the same way. And you can use it in Facebook. Okay? They don't have to be friends, by the way. It's on the on the because you know, Facebook. You've got the master personal account, and then you've got a group or um, a company or something like that. They don't have to be friends to join your community, your group. So culture. Um, what we're talking about here is the way you <coughs> interact with people, because it's social media. Do not change the way you interact with people. If your style is open and honest in everything you do in selling, make sure that comes out in your social media uh, communications. If you're aggressive and blunt, make sure that comes out as well. It should be the same. So you're, the way, the culture you deal with people should be consistent, because it's just another channel to market. And we actually refer to, when we're talking about setting people's social media, we say, what channels do you want to market? Because that's what it is. It's a way of driving business. If it doesn't drive business, stop doing it, okay? Well, I mean drive business, if you've got issues, you're fixing issues, that's driving business, because that's getting rid of negative stuff as well. So, consistency. Um, Martin's going to talk about consistency <coughs> on websites in a little while, but um, you should have... Um, who, who, who put their hands up to having um, Twitter? Okay. Do you have your own formatted back cloth to Twitter? No. So you just got standard conventional colour, right? Sorry, I picked on you. <coughs> so, I have. I have. You have what? Yeah, Customised. Back, background, yeah. Right. So, go home tonight, get an image off your website that's consistent with your image, where you project yourself, stick that on as a backcloth to your Twitter. And that'll then people see Twitter, they think it's consistent. Make sure you've got all your contact information on Twitter. Make sure you've got contact information on Facebook. The same contact information, the website, phone numbers, the same thing consistently across all of it. It is a channel market. If you just say, come to my website, they might not want to press that button and go to your website. They might be just happy to contact you from the Facebook. So if they can't get your phone number on Facebook, you're wasting your time. Twitter, they should be able to contact you from there. Contact details. I had a customer the other day, and they, um, I mean, I've got email, I've got mobile phone, I've got everything. And he private messaged me on Facebook. I just said, oh, when you're next in Honiton, pop in and see me. I've got some updates for you. Why did he do that? Because he was sitting in Facebook at the time when he thought, I've got to call Mike. Bang. Okay? So don't forget all those different channels of communications you've got because they could pick on any one to try and contact you. Right? Collaboration. Um, this is really powerful in an environment where you have anything where you want input from customers where you can collaborate. Different people give you input on design, colour, um, price. Um, you've got a new product to market, you want some ideas on it, you collaborate them. The fact you might totally ignore what they say is irrelevant. They believe they're part of the solution. So you then got them in your community. And they're interested to see the way the product goes or the service goes. Even something as simple as a, um, a bed and breakfast room. We're thinking about painting it. What do you think? Pink, grey or blue? Yeah. Something simple like that. Yeah, that's interesting. I like, I like it blue. You already had a pot of blue paint. That doesn't matter. The point is they feel they're part of the community. They like to, people like to be involved. Customise. So I talked about the background to, um, to, um, to the Twitter background. You can change the colours. Uh, there's, there's not a lot you can do with Facebook. But any of these, you can go into, if you've got a blogger, a blog, blogger is um, another Google-owned product that enables you to, to 
take a, a blog, which is a web log, a web diary, that may be not on your website, away from your website, but you can actually customise that and make it look a bit like your website. So you have a button on your website that says blog, it goes off to something that looks like your website. It's not. It's named your, your company name on it, but it's actually hosted somewhere else. But people then familiar, so they see that as being you know, customised for, for you, and therefore customised for them. Um, kind of take up rate of people actually reading blogs because if you're if you're kind of a well known person you're more likely to have potentially have people following you but if you're just trying to promote business and talk about what you do and what's happening locally all that kind of stuff what what likelihood are you really going to get people actually following a blog for the amount of effort involved to write it is it worth it, it all depends on the content if the content is relevant to the reader then they'll read it um, but it's yeah, that's that's a bit how it looks piece of street, isn't it? Mm. Because and if you've got the wrong community with the wrong content, or so the right content, wrong community, then they're going to read it, mm. right? So the way to know that is to get them to score your blog. So I've written a blog, so and so interesting feedback. Mm. What other subjects would you like me to cover? Mm. Yeah, that sort of stuff. Mm. Again, it's getting that interaction, <coughs> getting them to say what they want to hear, rather than you just throwing stuff at it. Mm -hmm. If you're writing a, 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 a blog a day. And you're writing it for you. Stop doing it because that. Well, you carry on doing it, but you're not going to get anything it's, unless it's relevant to the people reading. Think about the reader all the time. That's what we spend with Actos. We spend um, once a fortnight, once a month. We have an editorial meeting on the phone. We just say, look, what's current? What's important in the market? What can you sit and talk about? What can you write information about so people find that interesting? Again, it's going back to that thing we're educating the market. Um, we don't want to educate the market with things they're not interested in. So you've got to know your market. Okay, is that okay? Yeah, thanks. Cool. So, currency. Um, we're not really interested in last year's news. It's got to be current news. People in social media want to know what's happening now. It's very much a now media. So, if you've got something interesting, a, a new story, a new win, a new contract win, um, something, someone's just been down to your B&B, and they've, they've just had a great day, and you've got a picture of, of the family leaving the B&B, &B, stick it up on Facebook, and, and the Jones had a great day, bang, 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 they're coming back again soon. Something like that. Say concept all the time. Yeah, people find it. That might, because the lady asked, you know, I'm sorry. B &B, it might well be a good idea as well, if when they're leaving, and they're checking out, you say, can you enjoy it, you can get a quote. Yeah. And you can actually then provide your own testimonials through <coughs> Facebook. Yeah. 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 Well, don't put a name, but just the quote, what they said. Did you enjoy yourself? And then you'll normally get... Best quote yeah. goes in the like, like the business card. Yeah. Best quote of the month gets a free weekend or whatever. Yeah. <coughs> video. Video's good. If you, can get, if you can get a little video of them as well, get it up on YouTube. Photos, but we won't put their names up because they don't look funny. Like yeah. We normally have their photos. Yeah, but. Say, shouldn't you ask first? Yeah, of course you do. Quite yeah. a few of them. Excuse me, I'm just videoing <laughs> yeah. you. Quite a few of them actually are really up for it. Of course they are. Yeah. If you don't ask. Yeah, you put a photo or a video up, and if, and if they can then. Ideally, what you want them to do is you. I'm thinking from a marketing point of view, you want them to post it on your mm. Facebook rather than you post it. You want them to post it so all their friends see it. Yeah, oh, that's the way you want to do it. But that, that's a bit tougher, right? But then you say, you know, it's the old business card thing again. The best video going up. And you stick the video on. Now you can use two channels. You stick the video on YouTube and you embed it then into Facebook. So you've got two channels working for you. And people, people say, well, who's going to look at it? They find it. You'd be surprised. You put videos up on YouTube. You do no promotion. You go back six months later. Hundreds of people have seen it. God knows why. But... It, it works. Okay, any questions there? Currency? Um, communications. So we, we talked about this. It, it's a very powerful communication media. You have to maintain it. You have to update it all the time. It, it, is, it can be a pain, your point. But you know, manage, manage your time on it. But the communications and the, and the quality and the style of communications is extremely important. And conversion. Um, so really, this is about, if you're doing it just to get likes or just to get followers, stop doing it. You're doing it to create business, okay? 
That's what it's about. And if all you're doing is saying, oh, 10 more followers. I'd rather have no followers and lots of business, okay, than hundreds of followers. Okay, so it's very important to make sure you get the, um, the conversion right. And Martin's going to talk about that in a little while. So, um, they were all Cs. There's, there's a couple of others I want to put in. You know, the whole thing is about your credibility and your credentials. That's what all this summarizes about. The credibility of what you're selling or service you're providing and then the credentials that back that up. So things like customer testimonials, credentials. Yeah, that improves the credibility. Just think of those two words to summarize, summarize it all, credibility and credentials, and that's what you're really focusing on. Um, so uh, I'm not going to look at the products, the applications, the three applications in, in any um, detail. What I want to say to you is that if you're already using Facebook and you want to learn more about it, then go and look in Facebook. Facebook slash help. You can go in there and you can find lots of features that are in there. Um, I find new ones all the time, you know. Um, go onto YouTube for Facebook as well. Go and see how do I do this in Facebook. Go and search YouTube. So you don't need people. It's a tech. It's a technology now that's pretty easy to use. And if you're stuck, I I do it. If I'm stuck on something in Facebook, I'll just go into YouTube and I'll search Facebook to do this, groups, I want to do this. And it comes back with an answer. Someone's up there, putting these videos up there. God knows why, but they are. They're happy to do it, so we should use that, okay? Twitter the same. It's support, it's https slash support.twitter.com and you can get a lot. Twitter's quite good at telling you how to set it all up. You know, what hashtags are. Who knows what a hashtag is? What is it? You attach it to a name that's a searchable name that people can actually yeah. search for. That's a it's an index. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Good, well done. No spaces, though. No, no, no spaces. spaces. So that's the first time anybody's answered that question. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier. Community, you see? You answer my <laughs> question for me. I'm trying to pick the right the words that actually think they're going to get better. <coughs> Key thing is, though, if it's, a, if, it's a, if it's a three word <laughs> phrase, take out the spaces. Because as soon as you put a space in, Twitch will stop the hash. But it will find it if you just put the, even though without spaces, it will still find it. It's quite clever. So again, YouTube, I want to do this in Twitter. How do I do it? Go to YouTube. Someone, someone would have worked it out already. Ooh. And LinkedIn, LinkedIn's really good. Um, sorry, let's just go back a bit. Um, so, so Facebook, you should be using Facebook to promote a business to community. So business to consumer. Facebook company page, business con to consumer. Because that's the market. So if you're in a business to consumer market where you're selling to the end user, Joe Public, you should be looking at Facebook pages. Okay? If you're using Twitter, it's a broadcast medium. So it's a one-to-many relationship. Some of and they don't have to follow you to find you, right? They might they might choose to follow you without following you, all right? So they might say, oh, that's an interesting site. I'll I'll make a note of that one, but I don't want to follow them. Yes. Are you going to be covering Twitter lists at any point? No. Um, because on on Twitter there's there's actually a way of um, somebody creating a list of things that are pertinent or interesting or relevant to their interests or their business. And if your Twitter site gets put on the list, very powerful. then it gets sent out to all their people as well. I'm a very specialist area of our business, and I'm followed by lists that get my stuff out to an audience all over the world. Maybe. Very good. It, that's a good point. So go onto Twitter, search for lists, Twitter lists, and work out how you could use it. See, the community solves my problems again. So, actually, you're right though. But this is such a, a wide thing. If I try and get into everything, we'll never we'll never finish anything. Um, so, I'll give you a great example. Any estate agents here? Estate agents? No. Okay. So, um, an estate agent might have two Twitter accounts, right? They'll have one Twitter account, which will be what I would term as the the local environment, lo local information, where they'll just post stuff about the town, what's going on in the town. There's open a new restaurant and stuff that's really about nice social community stuff. Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to people that are interested in moving into the town. They're trying to make sure 
when they come and look for an estate agent, they go to them because they're making them feel comfortable about working with them. Because every time, oh yeah, there's another thing about Honiton. Oh yeah, there's another thing about Honiton. Oh, great, yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely in Honiton. Let's go and see that estate agent next time we're in there. So they're motivating them. They can see they're nice, friendly people. Then the other feed, Twitter feed, they, they should have, is just pure houses. Just, I've got five bedroom detached. I've got a three bedroom. And every single tweet would just be a house. The reason is, people won't follow that. People will find it by searching. So they're in Twitter, and people do do it. They're searching for um, five bedroom detached house in Honiton. And they'll find that agent's Twitter feed for, 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 um, uh, for that house. So what you've got to think about is how you use it. And, but it's a one, remember, it's a one-to-many relationship. So LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is really easy to use. However, again, there's um, Learn LinkedIn, and they, they run regular webinars. I nearly had a Rosmo there, but Jonathan Rosmo. Regular web webinars, which are really good, very helpful. Um, LinkedIn has 150 million members, right? It's very much a business to business, peer to peer type network, and people say, well, you know, I'm not in business, um, not really interested. But you think about it. The guys that are on LinkedIn are people, they're not companies, they're people. They have companies, but they're people. They've got to buy stuff as well. And if you look at LinkedIn as being an opportunity to market to the individual <coughs> as well, it's very powerful. Very powerful. Who uses LinkedIn here? And what do you use it for? I use it for, for two things, actually. <coughs> One for, I'm part of an association. So on behalf of the association, we've got a group. Um, we have discussions going on with it. Good, group. okay. So you use a closed group? <coughs> Yeah, that's a close group. Close group, yeah. yeah. And there's an individual as well, I just keep on that, yeah. Okay. So, interesting application there. Sorry? I was going to ask, is there a, um, a relationship between LinkedIn and Facebook? Because we've got a Facebook group page for business. Yeah. Uh, but I'm starting to get um, inquiries from LinkedIn subscribers, I guess, who are asking me why I'm not becoming linked to them on LinkedIn? Uh, no, there's no actual link, but there's nothing to stop you having a LinkedIn account and having that forum, same forum on LinkedIn as well, because you have a whole different set of people. What's the business? Uh, it's Western Australian Wines is what we're dealing with. Definitely. You should have a LinkedIn account and you should have a group about wine on there and you'll have everybody in it. and his son joining you and you have debates on it. Great application. A LinkedIn group with a forum, make it open, non closed group. Definitely do it. I was also just add to that that if you have the Twitter, you can Twitter and have the Twitter. Twitter yeah, you can have, yeah, you can have Twitter, words. Facebook linked together, and you can have LinkedIn and, fa and Twitter Facebook uh, linked together. Can't, can't so you do Twitter one thing and it comes up on everything else, doesn't it? Yeah, you've got to be a bit careful yeah. because um, there's products. I've got a product that I can list, you know, 150 different channels, but then you start trying to send big things to Twitter. <laughs> and so you've got to be a bit careful how you do that sort of multi-broadcast. And also, um, Google doesn't like um, duplicate data. So if you broadcast the whole thing without some refinement, mm -hmm. then some of it just won't be found by Google. And that's the objective, is to get it out there and found. Uh, was there any more hands up? Is that, did that answer your question? Mm -hmm. So you'll, you'll put, yeah, the groups. So definitely, um, the groups are very powerful. Um, a uh, great story, uh, one of our customers is a, is a lawyer, he's a brain the size of a planet, he's a double doctorate, first doctorate was in internet law, sorry, the first doctorate was in copyright law, second doctorate was in internet law. And he used to sell by, you know, the old style, you know, you get book, phone up people, try and see them, so and so and so and so. He stopped all that now, he gets all his business off LinkedIn. He runs groups, different groups in LinkedIn where he owns the groups himself, where he talks about certain <coughs> subjects. Um, because he's a, what I term as an SME, a subject matter expert, then he's got a lot of gravitas to what he says, people follow him, people ask him questions, and then people give him work. <laughs> Fantastic. He's got um, a Twitter account which he uses occasionally. Um, one of his projects at the moment he's working on looking after um, software in schools, oh sorry, access to the wrong types of websites in schools, if you get what I mean. Okay? And there's lots of software around that protects that. And he's there talking about these in forums. And um, he, he, because he's so uh, clear about his positioning and the legal stuff, there was an academic that took one of his 
articles on LinkedIn and retweeted to four and a half thousand followers on his Twitter. So suddenly his name's everywhere, even though he's only got a handful of, link of Twitter followers himself. So don't forget the secondary position of stuff. It's not just what you send out, it's how people take that up. Hence why you should be using uh, Google Alerts, because you'll find that stuff when other people talk to you. When you find other people talking to you, thank them. So, thanks very much for that. What is the issue on using the logos for these companies, uh, let's say if we're on a van? On uh, a van? Yeah, if you follow us on... If you go to LinkedIn, yep. their site, yep. and search on use of um, logos, they'll tell you. Okay. And they will on Facebook as well. Because it, and there's usually a page that says, this is what you can and can't do, this is where you can do it, and this is the correct um, logos to use. People do it on business cards and stuff, so there are set rules. Some people will allow you, but most it's usually okay as long as you um, work to the rules. Thank you. Any other questions there? Okay, so we're going to have a short break, but you had it first because you ate. <laughs> so no break. Um, Martin, uh, any questions? So first then, all right. Okay. Yeah, um, you Potentially, can have a hell of a lot of content out there. How a lot you, of content. Yeah. yeah. How do you keep all of the sites current and updated in a coordinated manner? So Don't have words, too many. If you change your profile on your website, you want that to therefore reflect on your yes. LinkedIn and your Facebook. Yes. Is there is there an automated means of doing that, or do you have to literally cut and paste? Um, that's an interesting application, isn't it? Mm. Someone, yeah, someone could write a bit of software for that. I'm not aware of any. What uh, Mike and I spoke about was it's all very well doing lots of social media, but if you actually want somebody to action something back on your site, your site has to perform. Okay. So um, what he asked me to do was uh, to give you some uh, uh, helpful hints and tips and everything else that you can use on your site today, execute today, to make it perform better, make it convert better. Yeah. Um, and the way I've done that is two things. Firstly, I've got a list. And secondly, for all of you who told us what your website address was, I've had a look at all your sites. <laughs> Sorry, didn't tell us. It's okay. Is it all right? It's always good to get a groan. It's always, a lot, it's always nice to have a bit of fear in the audience. Rather than the uh, so what I was going to do was uh, just go through on the run and forgive me because I'm, I'm going to pick the bad bits. Okay, and there are good good bits. There are some great bits in these sites. Okay, but they they are meant to be uh, not. I'm not aiming at somebody. I'm not because I don't know any of your sites. To be honest. Um, but it's just to do it in such a way that you'll all get something out of each of them. And I don't want to spend very long on it. But it's not SEO, and that's traffic driving. And we talked about social media traffic driving. It's conversion. How do you get somebody to do what you want them to do? An action, yeah? So, is that okay? Yeah, it's going to take me, I reckon, uh, I'm always wrong, 20 minutes to do it all. It's always wrong, because it always takes too long, so I always overrun. So, uh, let me run through my list for you, okay? And the way that we look at a site. Uh, every website, every page on a website is actually a single page website in its own right. It just happens to be connected to all your other pages. I know you don't look at it like that, you always assume, often, sorry, often you assume that a lot of your traffic, the majority of it, comes through your home page. Probably less than 50% of your traffic comes through your home page if you get things right. Most of it comes through other pages. So you have to make each page stand and fall on its own right. Is it going to do what me as the visitor wants it to do? That's the second point. I'm the visitor. I own your website. Not you. It's for me. So if you've done it and it's okay for you, but you're not getting any traffic, or you are getting traffic, but you're not getting any inquiries or conversions, you've got it wrong. You're reading me wrong. Okay? And you need to think about it and step back. Often the easiest way of doing that, by the way, is uh, our harshest critics are closest to us. So partners, parents, you know, my kids, uh, my, my elder kids are 20 and 23, so they rip my sight a bit on a, on a regular basis. In, and they work for me, which makes it even worse. <laughs> so, right, so that sort of helpful tips, yeah? So I'm just trying to help. Please take it that way. Yeah? 
if I say anything rude about your site, I apologise right now. Right, so every page has got to really satisfy three things. Why buy, why buy now, why buy me? Buy is an action, so it's not, oh well, we don't sell things on our site so it doesn't count. Um, if you've got to get a visitor to do something, and if a visitor, if you get a million visitors on your site and you see it in your analytics but you don't get any inquiries, I'd trade all of those for one inquiry or one order. Because visitors have got no value if you never know who they are. Okay? Um, calls to action. You've got to think about how am I going to engage with a visitor? What is it they want? Yeah? And most of you in this room, if you own a business, have got lots and lots of intellectual property. And, and the way I think of that is Mike's B&B. Uh, &B, phenomenal intellectual property in the area. And what they're trying to do is engage people to the area to want them to eventually trust them and then come. Your site needs to do the same thing. So even if it's a B&B, &B, you've got lots of knowledge, local knowledge. If it's a product, you've got loads more knowledge. You've got often a lot more than, than your buyers yeah, or your inquirers. So think about how you can use that. So you may have a telephone number on your site, but I might not like calling people because I might just want information. If I want information, I don't want a half hour conversation with a salesperson. I might just want to fill in a dinky form. And we'll look at forms in a second because there's a particular big form on one of the pages which is really good. So how do you get people to do it? How do you get somebody to trade what you see of value, which is often contact, with what they see of value, which is of, often your local knowledge, your product knowledge. That, and I'm, I'm not giving you the answers, by the way. That's, uh, this is not totally free consulting. But uh, you know, I want you to think about these things, because these are the things that often most, most organizations at this sort of size don't think about. You've got to. Um, as visitors, uh, we are now generation two, generation three, and we're incredibly impatient. And if your page doesn't tell me what I want to hear, right now, immediately, three to four seconds, you might be the best person, the best company, the best solution for my problem, but I'm gone. And you won't click away from your biggest competitor. So, uh, basics. Paragraphs of writing are, uh, there are some exceptions like about us, but everywhere else, really should be bulleted. I, I can't find what I want in a paragraph, you force me to read it, and you will annoy the crap out of me if you do make me do that again and again and again. So bullet things. The way that we often read websites, um, Europeans that is, not, not Asia Pack, but Europeans, we start, we typically start here because we are, we're used to writing left to right. So if you think about a scan route, which is where you call to action should be, you start top left, you often go across the top right, then you go diagonally across to here, and then you come back to here. And your calls to action, which are going to entice me to do things, and I am using sort of very engagement-y type words, need to be in that route. Okay? Um, the other thing is, uh, Google published some figures about attrition rates through clicks. So, when I say things about your sites, the, some of the answers are going to be, well, it's on that page, or this page, or the other page. The truth of it is, if you make me click once, you make me have to understand your navigation. And the likelihood is, Google say, you lose 25% of your visitors who make me click once. So, we have a principle of convert on arrival, which is, get me to do the action that I want to do on the page I land on. No other pages. That's unusual. I'm going to go again. Is it old-fashioned then, this business about, you're saying about paragraphs, this business about to get up the listings in Google, you have to have accommodation, bed and breakfast, Weymouth, all your pence, you have to do the paragraphs because otherwise Google doesn't like, this is what we were all told okay. in the very beginning and hence we end up writing a bloody book. Okay, so let me, let me step back. We've done SEO for 10 years, so let me step right. back. Okay. There is the biggest load I'm on video, so I can't say what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, if you talk to an SEO house, they would tell you there are 150 elements on your page and off your page which make a difference that Google analysed to put in this algorithm to make a decision where you are. Uh, we've done it for 10 years, we think there's five. 
And the reason we think there's five is because uh, it's an 80-20 rule. Uh, if you do all the on-page work, which is what you're talking about, mm -hmm. copy, content, alt text, yeah. uh, metadata, mm -hmm. uh, links, inbound links, outbound links, all those things, um, that's at about 80% of the effort and it's 20% of the return. So the five things that we found, we've tested and tested and tested, because the next point is, it's changing all the time, that's what you said to me before we started. The market is, but it's tiny changes. The big ones, the fundamental ones, still haven't changed. Google still views you and says, well, how popular are you? It just uses social media now a lot more. So it uses social bookmarking like Delicious and all these things, um, stumbles and uh, reddits and things like that. It looks at LinkedIn, it looks at Facebook, it looks in YouTube because it wants to know how popular you are as a page. Yeah. So it's not rubbish. You do have to get content right because you're not going to attract me as a reader if you don't. And metadata is still very important for Google. But it's not the ultimate. So just following from that, the five things that you mentioned, what are the five that you need to do? Well, let me t I'll give you one today, okay? <laughs> Inbound links. Inbound links. I'll give you two. Internal links between pages. We'll cover that in a second. Um, the other thing is, um, different elements are good, by the way. Uh, we do hate text with a vengeance as human beings. We do. We're very visual. We accept text because it's forced on us to actually search for things, but we do hate it. We, we think in pictures, we think in images, we don't think in pages. That's the popularity of YouTube. And that's the great thing about YouTube because we actually, we hate UK, Brits, Europeans as well, the Yanks less so, we hate very polished videos. We like grungy, real, uh, opinionated type stuff. We do. Watch the top 100 videos on YouTube and you just see, you know, it's normally some cat doing something ridiculous or a kid with a weird, uh, you know, a weird look on his face. We, we love all that. And if you can start doing that with your, you know, with, with in your environment, you will get... Trip up the stairs and you'll be a Perfect. <laughs> You don't get 250 quid if it uh, stays there, you know. Like <laughs> so are there any questions on what I've said? Any Anybody disagree with anything I've said so far? I'd say what the third of the five said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have to pay the bill somehow, you know. <laughs> oh, we will tell you. We're quite happy to tell you. Well, not today. <laughs> right, so I'm going through the sites. Is that okay? Are we all ready? <laughs> Are we prepared? Don't, 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 don't say it's under developed. It's under developed. Uh, I normally have three hands going up, so mine's under developed. Right, so uh, Apex CB. Anybody admitting to this one? Yeah. Okay. And this one is going down literally today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I've done these here, okay, and the line is not particularly fast. But that's still indicative of about 35 40% of the UK. And your images are too big, that's why you're getting the, the, the boxes. Okay? Okay. So it's timing out on loading the images, and it's a big quality issue. It's a big quality issue. If, you, if your site's not of the right quality, I say, as a visitor, your business is not the right quality. It is you. And that's scary, isn't it? Yeah. <coughs> you don't get the chance to talk to me either. It is you. Next one. I love the picture, by the way. I thought it was really crisp. I'm not trying to say it, but I thought it was. I thought it was really nice, but then I realised that it's a shop. And I was thinking, what are we doing on this page? Because it... What? Is it a shop? What's a shop? It's a brewery. It's a brewery. Called Castle Brewery. RAL, our shop. Outlet, trade. Is that not... Oh, there is a shop. Oh, okay. On the side. <laughs> So I was trying to work out what my calls to action were. You could argue that it's your navigation, but I would say, you know, I would say the principle is, uh, in general, and this might not apply to the brewery, by the way, might look as pretty unique. I've done with the brewery before. Um, the calls to action should typically be over here, 
and there should be a telephone number, there should be a, an abridged enquiry form, what do I mean by that? A short one. Two or three elements. Any more than that and I'll get bored filling it out and you'll see in your analytics you'll get a massive attrition rate on your form, which I have to tell you, for me as a conversion expert, that's tearful. Because that's so close to nearly getting an inquiry. So would you destroy that lovely white space with bits that people have to look yeah, at? Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. I, I, I would, because <laughs> I, I, I want it to, well, if you tell me that you get more business than you need, and actually you're only here just to prove that all your social media is working properly, then no, I'd keep it exactly as it was. But if it's not performing as you want, Frankly, it could be pink with purple spots for all I care, as long as it yeah, delivers the number of inquiries, revenue, profit. Mm. And if it doesn't produce this number of inquiries, revenue, and profit, then I don't want a pretty one. But that's me. Mm. Sorry, can I just uh, ask mm. you to explain again the theory of where people are looking on that page? Yeah. Typically, what we do, because of the way we, we write, is we start... Our, our view goes top left, yeah. to top right, across, diagonally, and back up here. And if you look at any of the, if you, if you put a heat map product on your site, you'll see the same thing. And you'll see the big spots, big red spots are always here, and then you'll see another blotch here. And depending on what you've got here, there may be differences. Something might be flashing and taking you across here, but normally I'll come across. Well, I mean, absolutely, that is well. I'd be interested to take a show of hands here. Looking at that page, everyone is probably looking down at the bottom left. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's the most well laid out because if I looked on that page, I'd go, oh, home, ale, shop. I mean, it's exactly how I'd look at it. I'd no, I, it I, 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 in my defence, I did say that if it's a brewery and it's, it could be perfect. I mean, I, but I, I my don't principles know, don't change because it's, it's different. And yeah, you're right, it's very clear. But there aren't any calls to action. I've got to click for a call to action. Oh, right, okay. That's what you're saying. And I, I don't want to click. Right. I'm sorry, I, I don't want to take that. I'm disputing from a design point of view because that cork is so strong. This one? With the, the loose cork, that's dominating that, that image as far as I'm concerned. And I'm, that's why I'm questioning myself and that's just a personal thing. And am I missing the point anyway? Now, it struck me as great imagery. Yeah? But I, 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 I then was saying, I, I was sat there. And quite quite a bit going. Okay, what am I meant to do? Oh, I think yeah, I think that's fair yeah. And, and 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 you know, I, I I can't. I'm not a designer, so I I would rip it to pieces. But I'm not a designer. You know, we, yeah. We have a designer in the team, and we do it as a consensus, so that so that it's like ripped to pieces. This is great. Anybody? No, my web designer's done this. <laughs> and there's nobody here. Okay, so say so what I like then. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, the products are all below the fold, yeah? So, do I know I'm going to buy from here? Or is it an information site? Or am I unsure? And if I'm unsure, what am I going to do? How many people are, are going to go down? Do you have to have it? Is it is it okay to have it partially visible so it encourages them to scroll down? Uh, you sort of that's a sort of a halfway house. What you're doing is semi cheating, but you know, as a purist, um, I'd say it should be. You know, what is it you want to do? And you know, is that not about us? I don't know. You could argue that, and you could say, well, maybe there are three key elements in there that I should show, which should make me different. Not an exact science, by the way. Analytics, visitors tell us whether we get it right or wrong. It's more a question of getting it less wrong. Having done it for 10 years, it's definitely more a, a, a to, to get it more right than you're doing at the moment, but get it less wrong, because I don't think you can get it perfect. Um, I did this one. Uh, this is Frog Hopper, yeah? And I did this one, I got onto another page, and I, and I loads of information, and I kept thinking, what do you want me to do? Is there a frog hopper here? 
Is there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the home page though. No, it's not the home page. The home page is the same though, isn't it? How do I call you? It's here. But it doesn't stand out either. I mean, it is on the lines that we talked about, but it still doesn't stand out. It, if it was different colour, 3D, stood out. Damages the design, I know. And, uh, yeah, I get that one. Garden craft? Yeah. Um, why? <laughs> um, the, the, to be honest, um, you've sort of got two home pages because when I click that, it goes to your home page, and I get rid of this because you, you're inviting me to go. What is it? Yeah. And then I go to another one and it says, and click down here to find out what we do, because let's tell you what we are. And actually, he cites, it should be the other way around, it should all, all be about me. I'm incredibly selfish. I'm only interested about me. I don't care about you. Not until you tell me you've got what I'm interested in. I have to temper what I say. I keep looking up and seeing that video. <laughs> Don't make me cry. Don't, don't say anything nasty. <laughs> this was fantastic. No. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I, didn't, I didn't find a lot wrong with this. I'll tell you what I did find. Um, do you see this bit where I'm going to there? That bit there? Yeah. Yeah? And you see that, that, that there, up there in the top right? So top right, that's your page rank. That's what Google gives you as a rank. Yeah, so it's from NA to 10. And in, it only shows us an integer. It's not, it's got more decimal places than any of us realise. Page rank, not named after a web page. Okay? Named after a guy called Larry Page, who you've probably never heard of, but yeah. founder of Google. It's the thing he did at Stanford, I think it was, before he decided to create a company beginning with G. Um, it's actually still incredibly important. You can't downplay it, and anything over sort of three, four, is really impressive, and there are some here that are like that. And um, it's link. What the Americans call it, link juice, um, and, it, and it then makes it a lot more easier to understand. Link juice is. Imagine I've got a, a big jug, and people are pointing. I talked about links before, so I'm not giving anything else away. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So anything in from other sites and pages, sort of adding a bit of link juice from their page, their site. Yeah. When you do that. I'm sort of drilling a hole in the bottom. What is that? I can't see it. That says website design Inverness Online, and it's a rollover. So that's a that's a click to their site. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we all do it. We all say, yeah, that's okay. We do it definitely. We've got some so sites for page rounds of four and five. Then? Say again. Is that bad then to have that? Name? Um, I don't think it's bad to have the name. Although I wouldn't have it above the fold and have it down here. Right. Yeah. But I wouldn't have it as a link. Because this, this jug of link juice, what you want to do with it is get as much in as you can and let as little out as you can. And if you let it out, you let it out to other pages of your own site. You know, um, sort of a virtuous circle. So anyone can put more in, but any that goes out goes into my other pages. So it's good to link to as many of your own windows as possible. Um, it, it's very, it, yeah, it's, it's a, there are ways of doing it, but you should have you should have support links to other of your pages, yeah. So you don't believe in linking out at all then? No? Me? Mm -hmm. No, there's a time and a place, social media, and somebody's done some, I, I mean I would show social media on here, but I wouldn't have it as a link. And then, I, but where I would have it is where somebody's done something for you. So they filled your inquiry in and you go, you send your thank you page, don't you? It goes, thank you, would you like to sign up for uh, our YouTube, our Twitter account, our Facebook? But I wouldn't have it off here. No, no I don't believe in outbound links. So the business about the more no. links you've got, the more Google likes you, the more they shove you up the ratings. That's rubbish as well. Yeah. There's the links in. In, inbound. And not all links are born equal, by the way. I've got complete contradiction. So I have a whole page where I am sending everybody away from my website to buy my beer. Because we don't really want to sell it ourselves. We um, want people to find the beer and to go I, and do it. So the principle does that mean no one's going to find my website? Because no, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, no, no. And there are ways of stopping 
the link juice going away. Okay, cool. Allegedly, but, uh, the jury's out really whether Google takes any notice of it. Um, but uh, uh, on principle, I can only talk about principles, can't I? <laughs> if you sell through third parties yeah. and you've got links off your site, you've got to have links off your site. Okay. I'm just saying links for link's sake is not a great idea. Okay, cool. Okay? I mean, we had a client at the last place who went, but well, I was told it was good. I've got a whole page. Yeah, I and he said, that's the thing. that this first When I get back to the office, I'm just killing that page. And I went, that's <laughs> what I do. Um, so uh, who's, the, who's is this one, by the way? Is nobody here? No, they're not here. Okay. It's a shame. <laughs> but yeah, you've got Twitter and Facebook. And uh, do you want to have that hard-earned visitor fight their way through, find you in all that Google hell, and then let them go to Facebook and say, I like them? Would you? Am I right in thinking you can set it up so they can click like without having to go to Facebook? And yeah, yeah, they can. Stay on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. That's two really good answers. Fantastic. And contention. Contention's going to be good. <laughs> Where's Sylvia? I'm here. <laughs> Do you know what? I sort of like this one. It's, I don't know. I know it's old. Yeah, but I sort of it, it says what it is on the tin. He's just redesigning a new one. So oh, I'm so you say. Yes, yeah, that's serious. No, I, I was just thinking imagery. Yeah, we think yeah. in pictures. Yeah. And, and you've got a really strong message because yeah. we all hate this with a vengeance. <laughs> yeah. can, I, can I ask a question? He doesn't particularly doesn't like, you know, tired of burden of bookkeeping, that sort of thing on it. Why? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's very powerful because I think it makes a message or something. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? That, that, that is actually all about me yeah. 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 fantastic that's what I said before oh, I, I, it's old I know it's old by the way I, I, just, I could just tell well, it's I old I put it up really quickly to get started no but seriously not like that one I was giving you the yeah. first one yeah. <laughs> but no um, this is great you know I would I, add, I would have that in my header so it came on every page right yeah because yeah, I've got a crest to go on because I belong to um, Institute of right. Certificated Public Leaders Testimonials as well. We've yeah, not so seen I've a lot of testimonials anymore, by the way. The we all we all buy through review. Do we do review? We talked about TripAdvisor. Nobody trusts it, but we all use it. <laughs> uh, you know, you go on to uh, I was just doing iPhone apps a couple of nights ago, and I'm going, well, I want that golfing thingy. What is it? Oh, that one's got five stars, and that's got three. I'll have the five stars. Mm -hmm. I haven't got a clue who rated it. But it looks like 600 people downloaded it. They may have all got rid of it the next second. I don't know that. But I trust the crowd. Testimonial. We haven't seen any yet, I don't think, have we? Actually, I found something. Sometimes you see quotation marks. Just quotation marks. With a, with a saying in there. And they don't attribute it to anybody. So, it, it's got to be effective. I thought, my God, these guys are really good. <laughs> My daughter Helen. Yeah, is, who's Sarah Bayliss? Where? Who said that's me? Oh, I love your pictures. <laughs> Can I have your card? Because I need you to do some horses. I have got horses. I don't, well, it said horses because I, I I read more of your site than. Is that any good having that up there? Though? It is, but um, everything's got to work for a living. So when you bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to click on that. Mm -hmm. Take me to the page where it says, this is it, that's it, oh, yeah. this is how much it is, or inquire. Or yeah. We have got a page missing actually because we are actually having a project yeah. page. <laughs> 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 I won't tell you that. Um, right. Okay. <coughs> I'm not doing that one again, I've done that one already. And he's already done some of the fixes. And he's already done the fixes. <laughs> The quiet American chat. <laughs> Anyone? Yeah. Who's over here? Not any of you worse than that. Um, I, uh, uh, firstly, um, the navigation at the top moves rather quickly. Okay, let, let, let me show you. Yeah, I struggled with the speed of it. I was trying to pick one. Um, it's like duck shooting at Yeah. And also, you sort of lead with you. 
and I hoped you'd lead with me. So the first one's company. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And the second point is all those others that I keep ramming home. What do you want me to do? I'm, I'm here. I'm desperate for something that's not on that navigation bus. Because oh, I thought, oh, wow, that was a... I only saw it afterwards, and I thought, actually, it scrolls across, I didn't... Yeah. Yeah? And, and I was thinking, if I wanted one of those things over there, what would you want me to do? Because I don't want to go anywhere else. Now, you've got your number, but I was looking over here. I'm not a, I'm not a smart user, I've just got loads of money. <laughs> yeah? So, that's my question for you. And you can't answer it right now, but you can think about it, yeah? And I might not want to speak to anybody. That's another point. You always want to speak to me, don't you? Because everybody's got a telephone number. But I might not want that half hour call with a salesperson. <coughs> I might just want some information. You've got loads of it. You've got loads of IP, so I go, you know what, I need a smoke cloak dev, whatever it is. Yeah? <laughs> what is it? How's it work? <laughs> yeah. I think we all need one, don't we? <laughs> Impressive luxury toilet hire. <laughs> that's a great one. I, I, was, I was so impressed, it was so simple. The home page, but, but I had to pick on something. But so I picked on your form. Oh, well, actually, I bought the business um, with the website, <laughs> and I don't particularly like the website, but it has all the information on there. Right. So, okay. other than updating photos and things, I, it sort of works, and I haven't really done anything to it since. Okay, your form's enormous. Did uh, do, do lots of people fill it out? Yeah. Wow, okay. Do lots of people not fill all of it out? What do um, your analytics say? I don't know. Yeah, there'll be a big attrition rate. Because you're asking me too much information. I've never even filled it out myself. <laughs> well, it, it goes on, trust me. It goes uh, down here. And it's everything you want to know about my toilet needs for a particular event. <laughs> um, but it's not everything I want to tell you. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I mean, because mainly I have, it's normally weddings. And one of the things that really annoys me is it says my event, I think it says choose your type, and it says private something, and da da da. And you might say, I'll have that blank, and people put in what it is, it should be a box. But, but I, I would, I, we're, I'm a great fan of uh, cheating forms, so two forms. And a bridge form that goes, what's your name, your telephone number, and your email address, and a submit button. And then sneak another one in afterwards that goes, oh, what information? Oh, I want all this stuff. <laughs> Because when we had this on client sites, uh, everyone would go there and no one would fill it in. Can I ask, um, what's your opinion on using captions on Spammers and things like that? Yeah, uh, only, if they, only if it starts to become a big problem. So only if you start getting lots and lots of spurious inquiries. I sort of, I'd, I'd accept sort of a one in 10 but wouldn't accept a one in two. But I, I don't want capture because that puts people off filling it in. Especially when it's a notebook, you know, I, I get it a lot when I'm setting up new accounts and things because they give you they give you two words and it's like this and it's a struggle to read on a smaller screen and I just go, keep it. And I become a nutrition rate on their analytics. Um, Can I ask you, what's, what is the right size form rather than having two forms? No, because I there's certain that. products, like for higher products, like as toilets, you, you, you're going to go to the internet with that in mind that you're going to fill out a form. Okay. I believe a lot of products well, like that. Because I, 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 I need to know how many people there are, and all of those things I need to know the answer before I can quote Can you them. not do that in your follow-up, though? Well, you why, know, why? You can sell yourself once you've had the verbal, would you? I, I, I don't want to speak to them. <laughs> I, want a, I, want, I want an email saying it's this date, it's this many people, it's this location. All they want is a quote, so I send them a quote and then they come back to me. Okay, but that's unusual. Yeah. Yeah. There's no point I, I in would say you end up with four of If I'm not by the computer, I can't say, right, well, right. there isn't a set price to delivery and collection. So maybe, maybe gate as well. But you've got to minimise the number of elements you want me to fill in. If you don't, you'll annoy me. <laughs> yeah, I realise that. Uh, and, and I would say do it two. I'd still do two. Thinking about it, I'd still do two. I'd still do a short one because you've then captured the inquiry. And the second one says, what do you want to hire? When do you want to hire it? How do you want to do it? Are you going to pick it up? 
uncovering all that detail. Do you need insurance? Most the big form, the second form. So when I go on and I go, yeah, I want to hire because something, click, 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 it's somebody's going to call me, and then I get the second form, and if I'm happy, I can fill it in there. Same with the VIP toilets. Mm -hmm. on but on principle, longer the form, greater the attrition. <coughs> on that note, why do you nearly always have to put your email address in twice? When you're um, um, that, it's actually it's because, because people spell it wrong. They always get it wrong. It's a typo yeah. issue yeah. Yeah. because that's how they're going to call, call you. And that, I mean, that, that, that puts me off at stage one. Copy paste. If you don't put my email address in twice, I, you, know, you don't yeah. know your own email address. What the hell's going on? I, I, I understand the comments. I, um, we just work with what we work with, and I'm not sure anyone's going to. I think that's historic, isn't it? Because it was so difficult yeah. for people to get their heads around We're doing emails. Our proper email and doing that. It's just not yeah. quite the same now, is it? People know nothing. Um, this one? Anybody's? Yeah. Yeah. Click to enter. Yeah. Uh, and I did throw another one on because I did it this morning, but nobody owned up to it. And uh, so it's the most interesting for me because if it's still there, it's really good. Um, there's a Twitter feed down the side, and there are no hashtags in it. We talked about hashtags before. Even Lord Sugar doesn't put hashtags in his Twitter feed. You should know better, shouldn't they? Okay, and that's it for me. As a business, if you're interested in uh, asking us to do anything for you, then uh, we do. These reviews in spades, we do a free six point conversion review for nothing. Um, and then we also. Free for nothing. Free yeah. for nothing. Wessex Video at the back, who's given his time to, uh, to record this. And uh, I'd like to thank Trevor, I'd like to thank Mike and Martin, and dare I say most of all to John and Anne for the hospitality, which I think has been. Been superb. There's still a lot left. Anne keeps saying to me they've got more trays of sandwiches. So if you've got dogs, cats, horses, go to the back and you, you, you can take what you like. Apart from enough to leave John for his dinner. I, I need some lunch. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, that, uh, that's really it. Uh, if anybody is interested in the event at Kingston Ward on the 14th of Feb, um, it's on the uh, the Marketing West website. If you can't remember Marketing West, <coughs> as you go out, there's some brochures there, and the website address is on there. It's the 14th of February, I and mean, it's Valentine's. Uh, uh, yes, we will. Yeah, I mean, it, it's there's 22 places. Um, we only announced it three days ago, and we've got bookings coming in on the website now. So it, I think it's inevitable it's going to be full. Now, I mean, that's 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 a pretty deal. So the fact that it's going to be successful, we're going to do it again. Uh, so the answer is just keep looking at the website. Uh, it's from uh, quarter to ten in the morning <coughs> until four o'clock in the afternoon, including an hour for lunch. Yeah, so they're sold there at the National Trust, and we do lots of these things for lots of people. Yeah. Yours. Well, we as, we as Marketing West, uh, obviously a marketing company, uh, what we do is try and educate clients and businesses as to how to market their businesses properly. We get lots of calls, lots of emails from different businesses saying, now what's this social media stuff all about? I know I should use it, but I don't know how to use it. So we decided to put on a series of um, half day or one day seminars teaching people about social media, whether it's Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, it doesn't matter, how to use it and how to use it to help their business. There's no point in, in being on Facebook or on Twitter if it's not helping your business. What we also try and do is teach them how to link it in to their websites and again to grow business. Um, what we're planning, this is only the beginning, we've so far had around 110, 120 businesses come along. What we're planning now is a series of much more hands-on sessions where people actually have a computer in front of them and we teach them how to really get the best out of their Twitter uh, feeds, out of their Facebook page, whatever. So that, that's what it's all about. We're trying to help people grow their businesses.